Welcome to Socas Milanke, our Friday weekly review. We have a lot to get into and we have a lot of things that have just taken left, right turn. Today joining me is Louis, Houston Red Army and Denver Red Army. Louis, welcome to the show on Friday night special. How yeah, are you, love mate? It. Love it. I'm excited to be here, my man. Thank you very much. What a week. What a week. We started with qualifying for the league cup the first car the league cup final with first one we've had in six years then we were all excited then we were all looking at the clock watching the internet looking who we're gonna get we got sabista a great guy from brand minute we were excited we didn't even get to like enjoy it taste it boom mason green was getting take me through the week take me from when united qualified in those stages, they qualified at the League Cup final for the first time in seven, six years. The excitement, yeah, think, the uh, euphoria. Yeah, when we were talking about it, I think the the message was was for United fans was look, enjoy this, right? It's it's a long time coming, and and we we were so worried about our string of six games before the final, and and we're worried about the 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 schedule and and playing Barca twice and playing leads twice and all these kinds of things. But we had to remember that this was a huge accomplishment for us. Um, roll into the to the deadline day. Um, we are not a club that makes deadline deals and, and, and marquee signings and this kinds of things. So it was another moment to celebrate, right? Uh, panic buy, not panic buy, however you felt about it. It was a solid pick. Um, it was something that we needed. Obviously, we needed it before Erickson got injured, but we definitely needed it after Erickson got injured. Um, and and man, the the bombshell, man. I, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what they do like that in the wall fish. Yeah, I remember specifically waking up, and usually I have a bunch of emails and all these kinds of things, but I only had one notification on my phone, and it was breaking news: <laughs> Mason Greenwood charges dropped. That was that was a big one. That was a big one, man. And, of course, the, the conversation has been all over the place, as it right. should be. Right. So, we fast forward, Colin Cup qualification to the League Cup final. Yay. Got us, we got some big stuff from Bramley. A solid signing, like a solid signing. Good. Then we get the grenade. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> it's and... a grenade. I don't know if it's a grenade. It's definitely, uh, it's an elephant in the room. Yeah, it, it, but, it's uh, like, it's yeah, just I very mean... weird. So, I did a poll. I did a poll. Oh, okay. I did a poll on Twitter. I did a poll in most in about four different WhatsApp groups. When I calculated the percentage, so the question was, should Mason Greenwood be allowed back to United? That's yes, the, that's no. The question, isn't it? Yes, no. <laughs> then the third question was, should United do more investigation and follow more protocols? So, mm. in the WhatsApp group. 45% said Mason Green should be allowed back. Really? 45 45? said allowed back. 45. Okay. 48 said no. That gives you 93% said United need to do more investigation and protocols. In Twitter, 65% said they need, Mason Green needs to come back. 30%. percent 65 said he needs to come back. I, I love and it. I, I, that, that, that was the, 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 what I got in three hours. Three hours. I had 65, 60% yeah. come back, 30% no, and 10% United need to investigate, need more to deep more into it and follow more protocols and procedures. Right. As you know, you see, it, 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 it is what it is. So, but this is the strange thing. From the legal standpoint, there's the legal standpoint, there's the moral standpoint, and there's the football standpoint. From the legal standpoint, when we all heard it back in January 2022, the audio, whatever, he was charged, he was arrested for um, assault, attempted rape, and controlling behavior or something, the third one. Then what a lot of people didn't know, in April, in the same year, she retracted. Yeah. She retracted that information, like, kind of saying, I don't want to press charges or something along those lines. Because even when, the, when he was arrested, the father said, oh, he's a, great, he's a great lad, blah, blah, blah. He kept on, blow, you know, singing praises. So you wonder. So the Crown Prosecution then, towards October, they realized 
he had been breaching his bell conditions by being in contact with the person all that time that's when they rearrested him again in october i said today for october of this year then come this february bomb was dropped yesterday yeah that all charges have been dropped due to the part that i'm going to let people understand due to key witnesses withdrawing and the materials they found not enough to convict because my dad was an attorney may so rest in peace he always said some cases get thrown out due to the fact like there's not enough wit and not enough information enough evidence to, right. to proceed if you are going to pros prosecute somebody then you need enough evidence to, to say okay this is watertight we could talk about this and we could put it in front of a jury but if there's not enough you just have to let the till you come back that's why if you watch some forensic cases they don't have enough they don't have enough evidence to find and work with you know yeah. it doesn't mean the person was is not guilty it doesn't mean he's guilty it just means they couldn't go to the next level but what people never said was and what most people never said was dispute the video that the video was wrong they never disputed it they never one day said oh that's a fake video it was altered all they said was they didn't leak it is all they said they didn't leak it so the video is legit is genuine is real i don't know if you can say that i mean look here's but they uh, never I, disputed I, it they never I, disputed I, I, it I, I, not I, once i i want to be extremely careful and i and i think this has been a uh, a continuing theme with a lot of with a lot of people like us who you know we're 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 very loyal fans we're very opinionated fans yeah obviously a very delicate situation and we don't want to minimize anyone's pain and suffering or or, or speak on to things that we we don't know about mm. what 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 my thoughts are on on this whole ordeal mm. um number to, to your poll to your poll i think manchester united doing further investigation and 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 taking their due diligence in deciding on whether to bring him back or to move him on, I think that that is the only correct decision, without a doubt. You right. have to give full appreciation, full recourse to, you know, to this extremely delicate situation. Now, of course, there is a legal standpoint, which is, you know, cases dismissed. He is not guilty in the eyes of the law. Um, morally, that's where it becomes a little bit more difficult because now we're in the court of public opinion. And public opinion is so quick to get extremely polarized. Yes, he should come back. No, he should not come back. Based on, on information that we as the public only have very few details. Now, when people see a video, when they hear an audio, I mean, it's 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 very easy to look at those things and say, well, you know, that's case closed. There's obviously a lot of a lot of more evidence, a lot of more factors around just those two items that that paint a whole story. Now, if if you know when it comes to when it comes to the legal side of it, yeah, you have to be able to prove it without any reasonable doubt right and if you can't prove it within without a reasonable doubt then a lot of times these cases get dropped with domestic violence with with with, with sexual assault and these kinds of things this is oftentimes the case and that is that sucks that's horrible on the on the flip side of that and this is where i've i've tried to be careful because i don't want i don't want to vindicate anyone who who is guilty of a crime but there is a lot of examples of young athletes, celebrities of color getting caught in such situations that turn out not to be either 100% accurate or, you know, missing key information. And, and these athletes have their careers ended um, for these types of things. I'm not saying that this is the case, but I am saying that if you are going to make a decision that's going to impact a young, talented you know, athlete who has had his share of screw-ups, let's not deny that. 
Um, but you you have to give full recourse in this situation. And I applaud Manchester United for at least saying that they will that they will take that due diligence, right? And like as a fan, that's something that I want to see. Um, I think they were they were very quick to kind of take him out of the squad and, and do all these kinds of things. They didn't necessarily dissolve his contract. I think that was the right thing to do, right? You had to wait for it to play out. Hopefully, and and I I know I thought I was in a minority, but hopefully maybe your polls um, are 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 kind of showing something different. I would like to see Mason Greenwood return if a deeper investigation reveals that this was not maybe maybe this case was either blown out of proportion or maybe that this was not we didn't have all the information right i think that to watch another athlete get eviscerated in social media and these kinds of things when we've seen some very we've there's there's some cases some very very tragic cases of young athletes having their lives ruined for something like this um, when it turns out that it was not true, when it turns out someone lied or somebody falsified evidence or these kinds of things, uh, if Mason, if if Mason, you know, is a victim of this, I, I only wish him the best. If he is not, and 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 this investigation proves that that he is not, then then yeah, he has no place in in what is the greatest club on the face of the earth. Right, long winded, but that's my answer. No, 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 but but yeah, it, it, but but I, I think a lot of fans are eager <laughs> to see him return. They say, Oh, I'm, I, 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 I'm in a dialogue with so many fans saying, Oh, he should be in the score by the next two weeks. Like, that's not gonna happen, that, yeah, that, there's no do, way. Do they understand happen. the psychological oh, wow. and mental trauma he must be going through? His head might not even be in the right place to even play football this season. Yeah. So for fans saying, "Oh, he he'll be he'll be ready for the game against Liverpool." Like, what are you yeah, talking no, about? Yeah, no, there's no way. There's I I would say this, and I and I was listening to uh to Goldbridge, as you know, I listen to him a lot, but I think he made he makes a very good point when he says, "If Mason Greenwood is is to return, it's it's not likely that it happens this season." No, no. he's got two years left on his contract, option for a third year. Um, you know. In that time span, he has to be integrated back into training. Um, you know, he has to he has to you know have chances to perform at, at at that high level. Even if you're you know even if you're as a professional player, you've stepped away from your team for whatever reason, injury, financial reasons, whatever it is. Even if you're training on your own. And you know you're working out every day. It's not the same as participating. No, you, you're as you're you're a soccer coach. Training. You know it's completely yeah, different, right? right? Exactly. Like you know, the athletes have to be put in back into that environment and and excel in that environment before they're even close to being ready to touch a soccer field. So I mean, it's going to be a while before we see him on the field again. If we see him on the field again, right? Um, I mean that's going to be a long process, and at the same time, you have to you have to you have to pull the locker room too, right? Because I mean, it's you, you can't just throw them in and say everybody get over it. You mean you know? No, of course. Have opinions and, and a lot, have, you remember a lot of um, some of his teammates they, they started they all uh, distanced and uh, started to unlike and unfollow him on social media. The, well, when it comes to unfollowing on social media, I think that's that's also kind of a um, that's a a brand and maybe a financial decision as well. I think that you know. No, dis dissociate, dis dissociating yourself from. They the have to dissociate. I think they have to keep their at, at arm's length when it's something so severe, and that yes. I would understand. Um, we don't know what happens behind those scenes, right? I mean, they they you know these are private individuals who you know they can communicate privately at you know as as anyone else would be able to. Maybe there is some, you know, there has been some support for Mason in the locker room, I'm sure. I'm sure some of his teammates have reached out to him and these kinds of things. Uh, on the other hand, I'm, I'm sure that there are some players in that locker room that want absolutely nothing to do with him. And I think that, and look, it's fair, right? It's, 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 it's fair just because they're, they're, they're people just like everybody else. Just like there's people that don't want him to return, fans that don't want him to return. There's fans that want, that want to have him back by Liverpool. So, um you know, I think it's it's it, it, this time is going to be is going to be something that we we have to follow very closely. 
I think as long as if as long as Manchester United do right by their investigation and actually do put some valuable resources into their investigation, I mean that's 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 all that I would ask for. Um, and if at the end of that determination they decide that he's you know that he's ready to come back and these kinds of things, I, I'll accept that decision. I'd, I'd be happy with that because again, I was I was really hopeful for for a young Mason Greenwood. I thought, you know, he has a lot of talent. I think he has a lot of things to offer. Um, I will say this, um, and there is, uh, and I was reading this as well um, the other the other day, that there is a contingency within the staff at Manchester United that feel a, a sense of duty to Mason Greenwood to bring him back in, and not only bring him back in, but but be more supportive around him. And I think that that's something that he was very much lacking. And I think it's something that that led to a lot of his problems. I, I remember when he was uh, dropped from the England squad for breaking cro uh, COVID protocols. And the conversation was, was, are these large institutions, Manchester United, the English FA, are we looking out for our young athletes? These athletes that we give a bunch of money to with zero supervision, players that have never had this type of money in their lives and say, good luck, or are we, you know, are we, are we mentoring them properly? Are we, are we looking out for their best interest? Are we offering them the best advice? So if he comes back, he's going to need that 10 times what any other player would need. Um. I see. I see your points, and you made some very, very valid points. I, I think it also comes to about. It also comes to tuition, where tuition where are uh, these clubs doing enough to support these young lads who are just being thrown money at, and they have so much pressure and media attention. You know, one bad game, two bad games, everyone's you know racially insulting, form insulting, yeah. everything. It, it's a lot, mm -hmm. and these guys are young. At the mm -hmm. same time. Like I said, these clubs need to do. I think they need to do more for the to these younger players, and the older players need to kind of. But but like Ronaldo was saying, some of these young players don't want to. They don't want to learn or don't even want to listen to experienced players. You see what I mean? I, I and, think... and that's across board. I'm not just referring yeah. to Manchester United because the young ones feel. They know it. They know they, yeah. they know it all. Yeah, no, 100%. 100%. Yeah. Look, I think, I think that, that Cristiano Ronaldo, perfect, what he was describing encapsulate, encapsulates Mason Greenwood perfectly. I think this was a kid who thought, you know, he had all the swagger, who thought he knew it all, who thought he could do whatever he, want, whatever he wanted, and, and he ran into one controversy after, the, after another breaking COVID pr protocols, showing up late for training sessions. Um, now this whole this whole thing, I mean, this is not his first time in trouble. It's not his um, first time in trouble with the law in, in a major way, but not his first time in trouble um, with his coaches, with his staff, and these kinds of things. I, I would say that the, the difference now, um, the difference now and why I would be a little bit more... Um, why I would be a little bit more comfortable with him returning is Eric Ten Hag. I think that he is starting. I think that he's starting to create a culture of accountability. Number one, but I would I would look to someone like this as as a coach who definitely could could handle that that situation and handle those types of personalities and and be like, look, kid, you know, if if you want to act this way, this isn't the place for you. Whereas I feel like we've had a lot of managers before that maybe maybe they didn't it, not that they didn't care not that they or, you know not that they didn't want to do more, but I think that a Solskjaer or Ranić, um, I you know I think previous coaches their their time and their efforts were so fixated on bringing Manchester United back as as a football club and and were so result driven that a lot of those things got left to the wayside. Mm. I think that the reason that Ten Hag has been so successful is because he has come in and and laid down the law, so to speak. You know what I mean? Um, but you know uh, what what made Sir Sir Alex Ferguson so successful, and many players have spoken about this. Uh, players have written about this. Is he had the hair dryer effect, right? He could yell at you and make your hair blow back, but he also had the ability to put his arm around you 
and 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 really guide and and really lead young players. And I think that Aaron Te uh, Eric Ten Hag, you know, I think he has that ability as well. So I think that's uh, that's going to only favor uh, any potential return for Mason Greenwood. Right. So so in reference to this Mason Greenwood, thing, the, the the moral side is you have people who are like myself, you know, people people who've got daughters, and um, um, they 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 would like, you know. Have have that bad taste in the mouth. Like, how would somebody else react if it was their daughter? You know, yeah. regardless of because some I'm getting some in everything. Like I said, they're gonna be conspiracies, conspiracies, conspiracy, conspiracy theories. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, so you're gonna have things like people saying, okay, um, all of a sudden, like the Crown Prosecution Service said, key witnesses, not witness, witnesses, which is plural, mm -hmm. more than one. We drew, did mm -hmm. not want to spoil anymore. Were these people paid off? Were they bought up? Like, listen, we'll take care of you. Just you know, you no, know, you know, as they say that phrase, nobody, no case. Mm -hmm. So, so it, 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 were these people bought off? Uh, you know, the Italian mafia, they they actually bunk them up and uh, <laughs> uh, silence them in a, in, a, in, a, in a, by putting their six foot under. <laughs> so, yeah, so, look, so, so there's so many twists and turns. Yeah, I think, and I think that's where that's where we as a fan base have to be a little bit mature about this kinds of things, and 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 understand that you know a a further investigation by Manchester United is is one hundred percent necessary and is the best choice because it, is it is it possible that Mason settled out of court? That's that's one hundred percent possible, but we don't without that knowledge because he is still with her. They are still together. I think they still are. Jerry? Yeah. Oh, Jerry, Jerry, Jerry. No, no, they, they are still together. <laughs> they, oh, that, man. So okay, that's what we're see, saying. In October. This is, this is a thing where, like, we're learning about this every single day. So, like, no, oh, oh, so you thought, oh, you didn't know. They, they're still together. That's the oh, problem. Man. Because I mean, when she recreated, re yeah. because the Crime Prosecution Service said in April, she retracted her story. Yeah, no, so I knew that. Like, I, I know that she... They are still story. together. I, I so it, 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 so it, it, that is the, the problem. Yeah, they're I, don't like, I don't necessarily understand the dynamic of what their actual relationship is. So now is. it is given a different... You, you now see the case is now a bit... It's got, it's got a little tilt to it now. Because I mean, they are still together. Here's, here's, how, here's how you could look at it, right? And I'm not saying that this is the right way. I'm just saying this is what you could do. If she's willing to forgive him, and she is the one who has been offended, right, and assaulted, and these kinds of things, uh, who you know, who are we to to judge these kinds of things? It, it look, it, it comes down to there. There's there's so many examples of powerful, famous, rich, whatever you want to call it, people that. Do something horrendous, make a comment, release a statement. It's swept under the it's swept under the rug, and we meet these people with grace, understanding, forgiveness. There is a a certain demographic of athletes, of celebrities, particularly athletes and celebrities of color, who never see this grace, who never see this understanding, who never see this compassion. So as a Manchester United fan and someone who loves the club and wants the club to do well and believes that a player like Mason Greenwood could, could help us do well, I want to see that compassion and grace. Only in that the, the club itself should check further right. and decide further. If, yeah. if, there is, if, there is, if there is pieces of this story that have been kept from the public that – that really vilify Mason Greenwood, then they need to be explored. They need to be exposed, and 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 Mason Greenwood shouldn't play for this football club. But I, there is that contingent. Like he's, if he's back together with her, right or wrong, <laughs> she's been able to forgive. Him. You you no, seem you seem you, like, you seem to be shocked, <laughs> dude. This is that's huge news. <laughs> <laughs> you should have seen. You should have seen your face when I said those two together. You're like, what? The same chick? <laughs> it is. It's a massive component of this story that is not yeah. in the narrative on social media. 
that's not being talked about. I didn't I didn't know that. No, I've yeah. been reading about this for the last few days. I remember reading about it in, in, in April. I remember reading about it when it happened. Yeah. I'm watching several videos. Like mm. I like Mason Greenwood. Like I the the, I, the, the, I, the, the audio the audio the audio is quite excruciating to, to listen to of somebody who's in it, it, yes. it, it was just like a very bad it. horror movie. And I get it. And I, I get it. As a parent, mm -hmm. you, you start to funk like, oh, hell no. Then when you, when her dad said, he's like a son to me, I don't think he, he he's like, uh, okay, well, what kind of father is this? So you see, and so I, the and people. I mean, I've heard that too, man. Look, you see, so, so you see where I'm coming from. But also. I know, a lot of, I know a lot of parents of daughters who they've either they've done wrong by the guy or they broke up with the guy and her parents go, wait, you did what? Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, when they uh, see the status <laughs> of the athlete, he might be the yeah, ticket yeah, out that, of their that, situation. I, when I remember when this, when this all broke initially, and I do remember thinking like, when I heard the audio, when I saw the pictures, when I saw all these kinds of, in her like Instagram video, like after the fact, all those, all those things, all those pieces of evidence, rather, when when I when you see it in the public sphere, when it's on Twitter and it's on YouTube and it's on Instagram, you think, oh, that's that's not going to help your case. Mm. When these types of things get leaked to the public, oftentimes it hurts the case rather than helps it. And yes, because times, there's already a premeditated done, judgment. And, it's done um, in a way to to kind of sway public opinion, and it's mm, done in a way mm, that is, mm. um, you know, the the most extreme worst example was um, Amber Heard, right, with Johnny Depp. There was a lot of things that she was saying online, and there was a lot of things that she was posting that people were like, mm, d "Shouldn't you be showing this to a lawyer, or a judge? This doesn't seem like it seems like you're trying to say something about Johnny Depp." And it turned out obviously to be to be kind of falsehoods right or, or half truths and these kinds of things i'm not saying that this is the situation in this story but it's it it's it's just a, a very clear picture of how these kinds of stories and these kinds of situations get blown way out of proportion and then just divide a fan base like you know it just oh uh, yeah it, just it creates, does it, it does. just creates a polarizing media storm that is you know meant for views and clickbait and these kinds mm. of things and if that is the case then you know to see a a young talented athlete's career destroyed over that is just it's heartbreaking it's really hard to, to watch so some other aspect of it is some board directors the members of the board don't want him back they have the the the, the brand they have the sponsors who might not right. want their brand being associated with him so yep. that's also that so that all that comes under the man united umbrella as in they have to decide is this good for the brand what, what do the sponsors think and right. what i can't stand in this moment you have to decipher so much fake news some idiot some buffoon some clown somewhere posted a statement from Nike that Nike have decided to reinstate him, pay him his back allowances, like, my word. So some of us, okay, www.nike.com, Mason Green versus Nike, not a single, not yeah, a dodo. Right. But what, so why are they put, so, so I ask myself, like, do people just not have anything better to do? They then really there's do another not. one, they I tell really you that one came out, Thumbs, <laughs> the, a statement, A. Ten Hag said, um, uh, instead they said Eric Ten Hag made that um, um, if uh, if Mason is found not guilty, he found there's no way he won't be able to join my team. He never said anything like that. Yeah, no, no Eric Ten Hag has not said anything about. They asked him it. today. They asked him today. Simon Stone asked him in the press conference. The press conference before, and obviously you knew they were going to ask him that question. Right. Have yeah. you met or spoken to Mason Greenwood? You know what his answer was. That's for the club to decide. I can't yeah, answer those right. kind of questions. And look, and and that's why, and that's why I think that Ten Hag is the best. Because you know, if he says yes, I've met and spoken to him, they're gonna track the timeline. Oh, yeah, right, okay. Exactly. Yeah, and and look, Ten Hag is someone who is who is measured, who is he he thinks before he speaks. He's he's you're not gonna catch Eric Ten Hag. Mm -mm -mm. You're not gonna catch him. You know, with with he some, said everything um, was. 
pointed question. That's, that, that's for okay. Manhattan. That's, Manhattan would, that's for Manhattan to make that decision. Yeah. That's for Manhattan to make that decision. They, you know when they come the question again in another way? That's for Manhattan yeah. to make that decision. He'll come back Correct. with the same answer. Yeah, absolutely. And look, Ten Hag is in, it, the, the firestorm that he has handled since coming to Manchester United oh, yeah. is second to none. He, I, this is, this is, I think, probably our last hope for a long time to have a career manager like a Fergie, like a Wenger, like, like the managers before that, that stayed at right. the club for long periods of time, because this man can handle anything. He handled the Ronaldo debacle. He handled, uh, protests, you know, ownership protests. He's hand, he's handled the potential of the ownership being sold uh, he's handled, you know, the uh, transfer window. He's he's gone through through so many trials. In and such and you know when they're time. asking him, you know, um, they are uh, um, him dropping Maguire. He, he stood strong. Yeah, no, like he's he everything that he does is under a microscope because yes. he's the he's the Manchester United manager. Yes, and he knows this, and he understands. Full well that the club is all over the place in, in terms of public opinion, mm. and you know he knows how to navigate these things. So you need someone that wise and that measured to go to a young player and say, "Hey, dude, if you're going to come back, get ready because you know you're not going to be you're not going to do anything stupid. You're not going to say anything stupid. You're not going to get caught out in no clubs doing nothing dumb. You're not going to have any trouble with the police." You're not going to do any of these things, or you're off my football team. Plain, simple, end of you know, end of discussion. And that's the only situation I think where he can revitalize his career in a in a in in a positive way. I think that if he what will most likely happen, it seems like um, if he is 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 if he moves away this is the only way that yeah someone said be. that that he might have to probably go and resurrect his career in, in, in out of europe and, in some europe think, and if he if he does that i don't know if he'll i don't know if he'll he'll gain i don't know if he'll garner that support anywhere else um you know maybe he, he drops down to to a lower flight team or maybe he goes abroad but i think that i think that this is the best possible situation for him to 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 get back on the horse and revitalize his career. I really do. I really think that Ten Hag is really the, the person to, to reform a career like that. If it is if it is decided that the Manchester United investigation, oh, you know, basically turns up, you know, that Mason Greenwood is still a liable, you know, player for this club. You know, if it turns out that, you know, everything is, you know, true or, or, or it was more egregious than it was, then yeah, absolutely, he shouldn't continue here. And then I don't care what happens to his career. Right. <laughs> so, 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 yeah. So, like you said, there's the legal standpoint, there's the football right. standpoint, and there's the moral standpoint, and all in this big mix. Is it a moral standpoint, or is it just social opinion standpoint? So that's, the most, that's and, the most, and the most, the most standpoint in the sense of like people, parents who have daughters and who are looking at it like, what kind of father is he? to let your daughter go through that and say there's nothing wrong or the support is still there, you support both of them. So that is the moral side of it. And yeah. the, the, the domestic violence at, at his own, has its own has its own roots as in yeah. violence against women. Or the, it's, 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 it's a lot to go it's through. It's a lot. So, it's so, a lot. And, who's to, and who's to say that, you know, as a young man, that, you know, that he doesn't deserve, you know, a chance to redeem himself. You know, it's, he's... You know, I, who is to say that he has suffered enough or that he has learned his lesson? That's, you know, that's that's always going to be the debate, right? Which, you know, no, he doesn't deserve any type of accolades or he does not deserve any redemption or, or, or any forgiveness. Or, you know, he has learned, he has grown, he has developed, and now he is ready to return and, and, and you know, change his ways and offer something more not only is you know to the club but to maybe the community at large um it's this is where you know we as a as a as a fan base have to have to decide you know are are we are we merciful and 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 forgiving or you know does he need to be continually on the chopping block it's it's a it's a long debate that is it's going to it's going to rage throughout this entire investigation 100% okay 
So, as, as it is, the case continues. We just have to wait for Man United to do their part. That's all. That's all. That's all we can do. There's nothing we right. can do. But like I said, the fans. Some fans are talking. Oh, he should be back in five weeks, four weeks. Someone <laughs> saying, that's just, "Do you know?" Like I said, they don't know the psychological and mental trauma that goes through this. They probably yeah. he. Do they know if he still even has the zeal to want to play football? They don't know. You don't know what people are going through. Yeah, he has not. Uh, he has not. Uh, I mean, all the statement. The statement he made. One statement said, um, "I want to thank everyone. I'm glad this thing has, mm -hmm. has come to an end. I want to thank right. my friends and my son who supported me." And um, that was it. Which yeah. I think it looked like a, a, a lawyer wrote Which that honestly out. Is a smart, measured, you know, kind of response. You know, where you could tell when it's measured by a a, 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 a legal team, like you say right. this part, yeah. that's what it's, I need to do, it's, it's, and I had no further comments. It's a statement. It's a statement that that should not polarize one way or the other, right? He's not gloating about you know being being you know free or anything like this. He's not demanding his spot back or anything like that. He's it it looks like he's willing to be a part of the process that gets him back into into action. Um, so hopefully he's he's at least learned to keep his freaking mouth shut. We'll see. Right. So if we've all much had to do uh, in all of that, we literally lost got lost in there with Sabista. We also got lost. If we have a game tomorrow, man, after the tomorrow. playing Crystal and Palace, so this is playing apparently. Yeah. <laughs> um, Crystal Palace, uh, Ten Hag talked about it. He's still upset that that was a game, the first match that they dropped points that United did not do enough to close the game out and mm -hmm. consider the goal that very great goal at the end, that free kick. But tomorrow yeah. they have to go there, that they must win, they have to beat Palace tomorrow. And good news, Zaha, I heard, I'm not sure because these days people just like to just throw crap out there and just, so I yeah. just, <laughs> I, you know, I, I just don't have the time to go in there and write things that are stupid and just say <laughs> things that like, oh, Mason, guess what, Break is, Mason Good is going to play for Man in two weeks. Why are we, yeah, we got jobs, my man. You know what I mean? It's just <laughs> stupid. But the game tomorrow, Crystal Palace, a team that, you know, they've given, they, they, they're, they're fighting hard. They're, they've yeah. been managed by a very great guy, Patrick Vieira, great Arsenal leader under the, uh, under the Wenger, Wenger Fergie days. <laughs> uh, where do you see this tomorrow? Man, I am I am hoping for a very positive result. Um, Crystal Palace, we know we know what their what their weapons are. We know where they're strong. They're pacey. They're creative. They they want to play attacking football. But you know they're a mid table side. They're a smaller side, so they tend to struggle. At Old Trafford, it's been defensively very very solid for us. We're a team that that is kind of known for trying to to be kind of attack minded and and trying to score goals from everywhere. But our our defense is what has gotten us to this point right now. Our defense has been solid for this season. Um, they're going to be tested tomorrow, no doubt. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm very much hoping to see that the home crowd advantage offers us offers us a win. And I and I'm I'm kind of being optimistic. I'm kind of hoping for a two nil. I will take I will take three points. I'll take yeah. five five four, but three. Five points. four, yeah, one hundred percent, yeah. And you and we would always take those kind of games. Like we want to be attacking minded. We want to be. We got leads on Wednesday. We want to score goals and these kinds of things. But I'm just I'm hoping for organization. I'm hoping for composure. You know, I'm hoping that we go in and we get the job done. So I would, yeah, I would love three points no matter what. I think you're right. Right. And it'll be good to see Sabitzer as well, man. I think he is. Yeah, the, the, the chance, um, Eric Ten Hag spoke very highly of him, that he's a very good player, that he's somebody that he's happy he got a player of that caliber. So that shows yeah. of the quality he wants from this guy and he's expecting from this guy. He mm -hmm. knows Ericsson is better than Fred and he knows this guy is better than Fred. So would he start him or would he bring him in? Fred, he likes Fred, but he just knows he has a bit other players who are just a bit above Fred's yeah. level. Yeah. And I, and and honestly what I what I what I think is what I think is really good in what you know in what appears to be open and honest is the relationship between Fred and Ten Hag. It seems like Fred very much understands his role, he understands his place. He knows he's not the most technically savvy or, or this kinds of player this kind of player on the field. 
But Ten Hag obviously knows that he has something to offer. Fred is confident that he has something to offer. So I don't think that Fred has an issue coming off of the off of the bench for a Sabitz or somebody, you know, a player of this quality. I think that, you know, Fred will be a utility player for us for a little while longer. Um, you know, I don't think he's as his career kind of starts moving down the line, it's it's very clear that he won't be a first team option for us or, or a starting option for us, but he will be, you know, somebody that can come on and and, and do a job and play professional controlled football for us. Right. Right. Louis, it's been an absolute pleasure again on this our weekly. We're gonna be making this a Friday slot, which we call the weekly roundup of Man United's yeah. week, the news we get for the week. And um yes, tomorrow big uh, game. We'll be at the R bar, hopefully. We get It'll results. Be the and, uh, Bulldog in Denver, Colorado. If anybody's, or sorry, the British Bulldog. If anybody uh, is downtown Denver tomorrow morning, right? You know. And if uh, <laughs> and, and of you Denver people watching, uh, Louis the right is a great guy. So learn his new songs. And um, <laughs> if there's no one doing, they are the punditry. They know what they know what channel to give them the good news. You That's tell them right. what to do. You tell them where to go. You tell them it takes five seconds to subscribe. Five hit seconds. Like you button, go to man. YouTube, hit, hit the like button, get the share. <laughs> you just go to YouTube, so as you like it, or you want to go with the man at the direction, ding, five seconds, you're done. Right, Louis, it's been an absolute pleasure again joining you this weekly roundup. I hope to see you again during the week, see what how we are. We'll probably try and get the London career on Sunday to do the, the post game. And we Love obviously, it. they want to get the version of Mason Greenwood. For, I know that discussion is going to go on for, for a few weeks. Because there's, yeah, there are going to, there's still going to be some things that we never knew that are going to surface. Watch. All right. So, Louis, thank you very much. Hope to see you again. So, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Thank you for joining us, and we shall see you for the post game on Sunday. Take care. Goodbye. Good night, and God bless. See you guys. Good night, Tim. Thank take you. Take care, brother. You take care. All right.